October 31st, 1984, Indira Gandhi assassinated, shot by her own Sikh bodyguards. A shocked nation holds its collective breath. Savage anti-Sikh violence breaks out across Delhi. In just three days, almost 3,000 Sikhs are butchered. October 31st, 1984 is a date that few Indians can ever forget. Could Indira Gandhi ever die? Larger than life, populist, yet secretive, Indira Gandhi had imposed her presence on the nation over the last two decades. She was a war heroine after the 1971 war, a betrayer of democratic ideals after the 1975 imposition of emergency. She was a prime minister revered and feared in equal measure. 25 years after the assassination of India's first and only woman prime minister, we assess one of the most controversial political legacies in modern India, the legacy of Indira Gandhi. Welcome to our special show, Indira of India. Within hours of her death, Sikhs across the capital were targeted and slaughtered. In many instances, the killer mobs were led by local Congress leaders. A passive central government looked on. In some instances, even colluded with the attackers. The new Prime Minister, Indira's 40-year-old son, Rajiv Gandhi, seemed helpless, even unwilling, to stop the bloodshed. This was happening all over Delhi. And this was happening, uh, as I always like to say, within a one-mile radius of the Rashtrapati Bhavan. So it was shocking that such a thing could happen. The violence of October 1984 was typical of what the country had witnessed in the last years of Mrs. Gandhi's prime ministership. But the most serious crisis was in Punjab. In the attempt to divide the opposition Akali Dal, the Congress built up a fiery religious preacher, Jarnail Singh Bhindranwale, a fundamentalist whose agenda was a so-called spiritual purification of Sikhism. He started off by campaigning for the Congress, but ended up becoming an advocate for the separate Sikh state of Khalistan. In the name of Khalistan, Bhindranwale unleashed a campaign of random violence. Violence which by the summer of 1984 had spiraled out of control and claimed hundreds of lives. She allowed her reckless son Sanjay and very irresponsible but very experienced uh, Gani Zal Singh who was first her home minister and then president of the republic to build a Bindranwale in the hope that he will vanquish the Akalis. What they did not realize was that he, like everybody in this world, could also turn into uh, Frankenstein's monster, which he eventually did and devoured the Congress.